Hello everybody, Todd here, all things archery and shooting, and today I've got another vintage bow review for you. This is a request I've had from several of my, my viewers to re review this bow. I was finally able to come across one for a good price, and so we're doing the review for you guys. Uh, I paid uh, $64 for this bow from eBay, so it's a really good buy. I think the shipping was like 15 or 16 bucks. I think I got 80 bucks in this bow right now. This is a 1983 Browning Cobra a recurve bow. This bow is a 50 inch AMO length, so it's a short bow, great for a tree stand or ground blind or stalking in the woods. And it's got a 50 pound rating at 28 inches. Okay? First thing we're going to do with this bow, we're going to get it cleaned up, we're going to get it set up, then we're going to get a look at it and see how, how it looks, okay? Let's go ahead and get it set up first, all right? Um, first thing is, you know, the bow doesn't have any string on it, so I went ahead and bought a string for it. I got a string came in for it. It takes a 46 inch string, I got one here for it. It's also made with, um, looks like um, maple and, uh, I'm sorry, maple and phenolic with, I'm not sure what the middle wood is in that. I couldn't find any information on, online about it. But I did find in, in a, uh, one of the archery forms that it's maple with phenolic on the, on the front of the bow here. It's got fiberglass backing on the front and belly of the bow. And it uses um, two layers of maple on the, on the limbs, laminated, okay? Uh, it's got great little tips on it. These aren't reinforced tips, but they're nice little tips. This bow's not designed for a fast flight. You have to use either a B50 or B55 Daycron. I've got a B55 Daycron here for it, okay? We're going to go and get this bow set up. We're going to get it strong and check the poundage on it. And then we're going to head over to the range and put it through its paces on this bow sheet. Remember, this bow is a 1983 bow. So this bow is what? 20 years old now? Almost 20 years old? 93, 2, no, 30, almost 30 years old. This bow is almost 30 years old. Okay? So let's go ahead and get everything set up first. First thing I want to do is I want to get it cleaned up. I want to clean this glue off here. So it's got some glue from an old, like, um, like a bare weather rest or something on it right here. So we're going to use some acetone to take that off. That's the best stuff for that. You can use acetone in these bows, but in, not in a lot, but in like, like moderately. Get you a nice soft cloth, like a piece of old t-shirt. And that should take all that old glue off, okay? So let's go ahead and take that glue off now. See there? That acetone will pull that glue right off there. It's like someone's been shooting this thing off the shelf for a long time. I see marks on the shelving there right out of rest let's get it cleaned up we'll get a new rest installed on it and we'll get it set up and everything again you gotta just gotta get you some acetone work it slowly you don't want to saturate it because this acetone can affect the um the clear coat on the bow you don't want to do a lot just enough to get that glue off there and you'll feel that glue come off okay starting to come off now all right And be sure you get all that glue off where you put your new one on there, okay? <clears throat> this has a radius shelf, which is kind of nice, so it should give a pretty good clearance on your arrows. Okay, we're using a bare hair rest with a leather plate on it. So you're going to put your rest on there. You want to watch which way the, the grain runs on this. You want to be sure it goes with the grain with your, with your arrow, okay? Not against it, okay? All right, so just line that with the back. All right. Take your marking pen. Don't worry about getting a little marker on your bow. It'll come off with that acetone. But you want to go ahead and mark all the way across there. That leaves your template on the back of it. And then take your, your acetone. It'll pull that marker. If you need a marker on it, right off there. Okay. Get your sharp pair of scissors. And go ahead and cut that out. Use a knife blade to help peel the backing off. Works really good. Nice sharp knife blade. Okay. 
Okay. You're going to start in the back where you had this thing originally set at. Now, first thing I always do is you want to put this leather piece on first. Your leather plate goes on here now. Okay. Just like that. Then your rest goes on. Okay, and my rest is on there. Let's go ahead and trim the excess off. Rest is on there now. Okay, we've got the rest installed now. Now we're going to get it strung up and get the um, knock point installed and we can check the draw weight. Okay. Again, I have this string made for me. It's a, this is a 50 inch bow. This is a 46 inch recurve string. It's a B50 Dacron. It's a 16 strand string with nylon serving. It's been well waxed, I have a, uh, so, and you got, again, you got a big loop and a small loop. Again, the big loop always goes on top. The bottom loop always goes on the bottom. All right. We're going to go ahead and string this up now. We should always use a bowstring when we do this though, okay? This these older bows need a bowstring on them. That way you won't twist the limb on them. Okay. Okay, quirk, what I can find online about what I can find online about this bow is it lacks between a seven and a half and eight and a half inch brace height. So we're gonna check that right now. The way you check the brace height, you check from the lowest part of the grip to the string. And I come in right at about seven and three quarters. Okay. So minimum seven and a half, maximum seven and at eight and a half, so this should be fine. Alright. Let's go ahead and put our knock point on now. You need a bow square pair of knocking pliers of course and of course you're going to need a knock which is right here okay got a knock right here okay now what you're going to need to set your knocking point in this bow you're going to need a bow square bow's got to be strong proper brace height this one's seven and three quarters you attach your bow square to it let it sit right on top of the um, rest I always try to put mine about 3 8 high because I can always move it up and down and adjust it that way. It's better to be a little high than, than low. It's just you'll find your arrows will fly better, at least in my, in my experience. Okay, this is being a nylon serving. So you don't want to put too much crimp on there because you, your, your, you won't be able to move this knock around until you get your proper brace height input. Either a double knock or crimp it in really good. Okay. Again, you don't want to crank this down all the way. OK, 
Okay, now the bow is knocked. Okay, you got a proper knock point in the bow right now. Knock point is set, three eighths inch above rest. Let's go ahead and check the draw length. I'll check the draw length two ways. First, I'm gonna check it in my draw length of 29 and a half inches. This is using a uh, handheld draw scale by Werner. And then I'm gonna go back to my my, um, my other room there where my tiller machine's at, and I'll check it on my tiller machine with the, with the digital scale at 28 inches and see exactly how close to 50 pounds it comes. So first, we're gonna check it with this scale here, okay? All right, here we go. All right, and my draw length of 29 and a half inches, this boat comes in right at 52 pounds, okay? All right, let's go ahead and check it. I'll be back in a minute. Let me go ahead and check it on my, um, on my tiller machine at 28 inches. Okay, at 28 inches, this boat comes in at 49 pounds exactly. So it's a little bit less than the 50 pound rate of weight, all right? Okay, you've strung up this bow from limb tip to limb tip. It's only 44 inches, so it's a really short bow. It'd be great for like a tree stand or a ground blind or something. So, let's go get a close up of this bow, then we'll head out to the range and put it through its pace and see how it shoots. Let's get a close up of this bow now. As you can see, here's your um, listing on the bow. That's your serial number. That's how it was the date of 1983. It's a 50 pound bow at 50 inch AMO. If you can look closely, you can see two layers of um, maple inside the limbs. It's got black fiberglass on the belly and the back of the bow. It's got a real beefy grip. I'm not used to it. It's a medium grip height, but it's a really thick grip. So let's get really big hands. This is not be a good bow for you. Yeah, pretty good, more than average size hands, because my hands are pretty good size, and I can barely get my fingers around that bow. If you look here, I mean, barely get my fingers around that bow, as you can see. See that? And I've got pretty good size hands. So if you got small hands or medium hands, this might not be the bow for you. It's got a fairly short sight window. I measured it three inches. Three. I'm sorry, three and a half inches for the sight window. I have this bare hair rest with a leather plate on it. All right. This is phenolic. And this is um, maple right here. I'm not sure what that um, is right there. I call that the power band. It kind of looks like maple to me, but I'm not sure. It's like the same wood as this. But I couldn't find information on the line about it, but I'm pretty sure it's maple because it's almost the same grain and same color as the maple. So phenolic and maple with the, what I call a power band in there. So the outside bow you see is in really good shape. There's no dings or dings or pings in it. These bows don't have a crown on them. These are considered like a working man's bow, inexpensive bow for hunting. All right, it comes all the way down here. These are the tips on them. They're fiberglass reinforced tips. They're not, they're not designed for fast life. They're not very thick, but they are still a pretty decent tip though, okay? Uh, here's the back of the bow, as you can see, coming across. You can see right there, Browning Cobra. This is the string I had made for. It's a 16 strand B55 Dacron string with nylon serving in it. The top of the bow, there's no limb twist or anything like that in the bow. Here's the front side of the bow, all right? Overall, the bow's in really good shape. I mean, so I'm really happy with them. I mean, it's really a good looking bow, so. Okay, we're gonna test this bow with two arrows. First of all, remember, this bow's 52 pounds at my draw length, okay? So the first arrow we're gonna test with is gonna be this here. This is a, um, a 416 grain arrow, 420 grain arrow, roughly. Um, so I guess it's roughly around eight grains per pound of draw. Being this is a 52 grain, a 52 pound bow at my draw length. These are 420 grain carbon shafts. These are a, a 500 carbon shaft. Okay. So they have a, uh, they have a total of 200 grains up front. They got a 100 grain insert with a 100 grain point on it, and they have four inch turkey feathers. Okay. And the second one we're going to be checking. This one here is like 12 grains per pound of draw. It's a 630 grain arrow. This one has a total of 250 grains up front. It's got a 150 grain insert in it. It's got a 100 grain point on it. These are a, a little bit stiffer spine. These are a 450 arrow, not a, four, not a 400 or 500, sort of 450 kind of right in the middle. It does have five inch turkey, I'm sorry, four inch turkey feathers on it. And this one is, comes in at 620 grains. This one comes in at 420 grains, okay? So we're gonna check, test both of these out the range on this bow and see how fast this bow can push these two arrows, all right? Let's head out to the range now, put this thing through its paces, we'll check the velocity of the bow, we'll check the accuracy, how it handles, how quiet it is, and how it shoots. All right? 
I'll see you guys out in the range in a minute. Okay, first arrow we're going to try is the 430 grain shaft. This is roughly about 8 grains per pound of draw weight. This is a 31 inch arrow. It's a 500 grain shaft. Um, it uses a 100 grain insert and a 100 grain point, 4 inch turkey feathers. Let's put 6 arrows across the crest and see what it does. Remember, 8 grains per pound of draw weight average. Let's see what we get. Uh, the chronograph's about 10 foot in front of the um, target. I'm going to be about 10 foot from the chronograph, so we should get a pretty good reading here. All right, first arrow, okay? Here we go. One sixty. One sixty one. One sixty one. Let's see how this one does. Six hundred almost 630 grains. First arrow. 145. Second arrow. Duplicate 145. Third arrow. Duplicate 145. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try the target portion of this. We're going to be shooting this Morel's life-size burlap hog target. I'll be aiming for here. This, this bow, I mean, it's not very fast. I'm kind of disappointed in the speed. I thought it'd be faster than that. I mean, my Bear Kodiak Magnum is a much faster bow. It's about the same kind of bow as a 52-inch bow. And a 45-pound bow launches arrows about 175 feet per second. This thing's barely managing 160 feet per second. So we're going to stick with the lighter weight arrows, 8 grains per pound of draw weight. And we'll go ahead, these are the 430 grain shafts, we'll back up 20 yards here and we'll try to put them all close to this blue on center as we can. I'll just give it a shot, 3 arrows, 20 yards, here we go. Okay, we're going to move on to the accuracy portion of this review now. I have to say after doing the speed portion, I'm kind of disappointed in this bow, it's actually kind of slow. I mean these 8 grains per pound of draw weight arrows they're barely making 160 feet per second with a 52 pound bow. I mean the hunting weight, I normally use 630, 640 grain arrow. They're only coming across 145 feet per second. It's kind of disappointing considering it's a browning bow. It's supposed to be really good bows, but uh, the speed portion didn't do very well on it. Give you a comparison, my Bear Kodiak Magnum. I got a 1974 vintage Bear Kodiak Magnum. I've done a review on this channel. You can check it out. That's only a 45 pound bow. And with these same arrows around 420 grains, they were pushing, I think, I want to say 175, 176. Uh, and the hunting weight arrows are pushing about 160. So this this thing's really slow. So, But let's see how it shoots accurately wise. Maybe, maybe I mean, speed's not everything, but speed is nice. Let's see how accurate this bow shoots. We'll aim for here. I'll step off 20 yards. Got a piece of blue tape here on my Morel's hog target. It's a burlap sack hog target sitting on top of a hay bale. Let's step off 20 yards, see how it shoots. Well, it's not so bad. It's shooting this maybe an inch high at 20 yards, maybe I guess two inches over to the right. So shooting to the right, a little high, but I mean, it's still less than a three inch group 20 yards. It's not too bad. Let's try it on my on my three deer uh, by 3D buck target here. Try that.
Okay, this is my Delta McKenzie 3D deer target. Um, we're going to try the same shot, 20 yards, shoot this center tape here, see what we can do. Let's back off 20 yards, put three arrows, see what we can do. Here we go, 20 yards. Well, I really can't fault its accuracy. I mean, it shoots pretty tight, so that's about a three inch grip. It's a little bit high and to the right, like the other target. So, accuracy is pretty decent, not too bad. All right. Let me give you some shots of the tiller of the bow, how it looks when you shoot, when you draw. We'll take a look at it then. Here we go. Okay, you can see the tiller of the bow, see how it beholds? Let's take a look at it. Okay. Okay, let's take a head-on shot, see how it looks. Boy, that bow is loud. You hear that? How loud that bow is? There we go. All right, let's go ahead and um, head inside, and we'll talk about this bow, my final thoughts on it, and wrap this up. Okay, we just finished the rain session on this Browning bow. It's a Browning Cobra bow, 50 inch AMO, 50 pounds and 28 inches. I gotta tell you, I'm not really impressed with the bow. Um, let me tell you, I'll tell you, what, tell, you what, I'll tell you what I like about the bow and then what I don't like about the bow. And then we'll go through my six um, criteria I, I grade every bow on. First being quality, second being the specifications of the bow, third being the shootability of the bow, uh, fourth being the speed of the bow, how fast the bow is, fifth being how quiet the bow is, and sixth the value for the bow. So first let me talk about what I like about the bow, okay? Then I'll get to what I don't like about the bow. What I like about the bow, it's short, very compact, very lightweight. I mean, this is a really light bow. I mean, it feels like nothing in your hand. And being only 44 inches limb tip to limb tip strong or 50 inches unstrung, it'd be a great bow for like a ground blind, natural ground blind, a tree stand, or even stalking through the woods. Okay, um, I didn't think I liked this grip because it's so big, but actually the grip is very comfortable for me. I do have a fairly large hand, but the grip is pretty comfortable for me. The people with like medium hands or smaller hands probably wouldn't be able to get their, their hand around this grip. They might not be as nice at, like it about that. But I do like the grip. Think of what I do like the grip on the bow. I would like the overall look of the bow too. I think it's a it's a it's a striking bow. It really is. I mean, I, I love the the phenolic and the and the maple in the dark maple in there. It just looks it's a really nice looking bow. Okay, good looking tips on it. Now let's talk about what I, oh yeah, also I want to say, um, the bow is accurate too, so it does shoot where I'm pointing it at, so I can't fault it for that. It does shoot really well, pretty accurate. Now let's talk about what I don't like about this bow, okay? First off, I don't like about the bow is that it's slow. I mean, this is probably the slowest bow of all the bows that I, I have to go back to my records, but I think once I do, I'll put a note in here somewhere with what I think about this, uh, how slow it is. But this bow here is probably the slowest bow I've shot of all the bows I've tested. I mean, when you're averaging 145, 140, I'm sorry, actually 143 feet per second, roughly 143, yeah, 143 feet per second for a 630 grain hunting arrow, that's really slow now. That's not even, that's nowhere near, that's not fast. That's not, I mean, usually a 630, 640 grain arrow, I have a 50 pound bow, should be moving around 160 to 165 feet per second, somewhere around there, roughly. This was doing 143, 100, I'm sorry, average 144 feet per second. Okay, even with the eight grains per pound of draw, which is a 430 grain, which is a really lightweight arrow for this, it's only clocking in 160 feet per second. I mean, with a 50 pound bow at a 430 grain shaft, 
Most bows are doing mid 180s to uh, 190. So these bow, this bow is really, really slow. I don't know if it's because it's a, maybe the bow string or maybe the bow is it's old and it's, and it's and the limbs are losing a lot of their a lot of their cast to them. But I mean, it is a B55 string. It requires it calls for a B50 Dacron, but you can use a B50 over a B55 in place of a B50 Dacron. You get a little more performance out of it. So I don't think it's the string because it is a brand new string. I really think that because of the slowness of the bow, it might be because the bows lose some of the cast. Maybe the the limbs are just not. I don't know. Maybe I don't understand. But I've never shot a recurve bow as slow as this. I mean, even on that old. Um, if you look on my, my, my reviews here, you will find a Ben Pearson 304 1954 vintage bow, long bow. That bow was out shooting this bow at the same weight, and that's pretty bad. All right, so let's get to my six criteria of the bow, and we'll go from there. Remember, I rate all my bows on the same thing. The first one being quality. Quality is with how, how good the bow is made, with what I think about the quality of the bow and how well it's, how well it's put together. Well, this bow, I mean, it is almost 30 years old. It's a 1983 vintage model. I don't see any glass separation on it. I don't see any sanding marks. I mean, the bow is in fairly decent shape, both cosmetically and structurally. I don't see any damage to the bow. So it's held up real well. I mean, the glass, there's no cracking in the glass. There's no... Um, I mean, it's just, it's in really good shape, so it's held up real well. So, for quality, I got to give the bow, an, an, uh, I have to give it an 8 for quality, okay? All right? All right, um, specs of the bow. Well, according to Browning, this bow should be 50 pounds at a 50-inch um, AMO with a 28-inch draw, so 50 pounds at 28 inches. And my drawing is 52 pounds. Actually, the actual draw length comes in just under 49 pounds at, at 28 inches. So it's just about a little more than a pound off. I don't know if that's because maybe the bow is wore in, or that could be the reason why it's shooting so slow, because it definitely doesn't feel like a 50-pound bow. You pull this bow back, and, I mean, you don't have any kind of stacking whatsoever. But, I mean, the specs of the bow, I mean, it's a, I mean it meets the specs, I would say. I'm not going to really ding it for that one pound, so I'm going to give it an 8 for specs, okay? A shootability of the bow, I mean, the bow otherwise, we'll get to that in being loud. i will get to that in a minute. The bow does not stack at all. I mean, I pulled this bow back to 29 and a half inches. There's no stacking at all. It's a very comfortable bow to shoot. I love the way the handle fits my hand. I didn't think I would like the handle. It's a big beefy handle, but it fits my hand really well. It shoots, I mean, it shoots where I'm pointing at. I look at it, it's going, the barrel's going right where I want it, even though they're going slowly. So, I mean, I was able to get pick this bow up and right away get on target with it. So that's how I rate my shootability. So I got to give shootability of this bow a nine. I mean, it's really a good shooter. I mean, it's one of the better shooters I've come across. I mean, it's a really good shooting bow. It's just slow and loud. Now let's talk about the speed of the bow. This is where I'm really kind of diverging. I'm really disappointed. In. This bow is a 52 pound bow at my draw weight. Okay, most bows at eight grain per pound of, of draw weight, which is roughly a 424 and 30 grain arrow, will come out of my other bows between 185, 190 feet per second, somewhere in that range. Okay. This bow is barely breaking 160 feet. Actually, the average is 161 feet per second with the 8 grains per pound of draw weight. That is ridiculously slow for a recurve bow. I mean, it's slower than probably the slowest bow I've shot. When you move up this bow to a heavier weight hunting arrow, it's like to shoot like a 630, 640 grain arrow. Bows, it, it's really slow. I mean, it's, you can sit there and watch the bow like, ooh, boom, ooh, boom. Really slow. I mean, an average of 143 feet per second with a 640 grain shaft. So that's really slow. This is probably I went back. I went back and um, I checked my records. This is the actual slowest bow I've ever come across. It shoots. It shoots slower than that. That 30. Remember that 30 pound. I did a review on a on a 30 pound bow not so long ago, and it shot faster than this thing. So I'm gonna have to get it for speed. I'm gonna have to give it probably a two. It's really slow. I've never come across a bow so slow. All right. Quietness of the bow, that's my other gripe I have about this bow. For a recurve bow, they do have some slaps of noise, but this thing's really loud. I mean, you hear that? This thing is just really loud. You're going to need some serious string silencers on here and some felt on your on your bow limbs here. I mean, just get rid of that noise, but it's got a lot of, I mean, it's got a lot of noise to it. And once you put all those string silencer stuff on, it's going to slow the bow down even more. So the bow is not very quiet, so I'm going to give it probably for quietest about a five, okay? Value of the bow? Well, the value of the bow, I mean, I pay with shipping about $80 for it. That's including shipping costs from eBay. I mean, if the bow is a little bit more, I mean, it shoots right, it's accurate and stuff. So, I mean, for $80, I really can't complain. It'd be a nice bow, I mean, 
and it actually doesn't really feel like I'm pulling 52 pounds this boat. I mean, it feels it really feels good when you shoot it, and the weight just doesn't stack. So, for eighty dollars, I think it's a fairly good value for eighty dollars. I mean, you really can't go wrong for that. I mean, I'll spend more than that on on a beer night, and watching a football game with my friends. Matter of fact, I did watching the playoff games uh, a couple Sundays ago. So, but I mean, for eighty bucks, you really can't go wrong. So, I'm gonna give it for value. I'll give it a uh, I'll give it a a seven for value, mostly because it's got a good money value, but not a good quality. I mean, the, the the speed of the bow really hurts this bow a lot and how, and how loud it is. All right, let's add all those up and see what we come up with, okay? 8, 16, 25, 27, 32, 39. This bow scored a 39 out of 60. This is the lowest score of any of the bows I've tested over the last year. Before that, it was a 41 out of 60. So, can I recommend this bow to somebody? No, I really can't. I mean, this. I mean, it shoots accurate, but the speed and how loud it is, it really takes away from the bow. I mean, if you're a beginner and you want something really inexpensive and cheap, it might be a good bow for you. But if you're a bow hunter like I am, or intermediate bow, or intermediate archer, you won't be happy with this bow. I mean, it's just it's too too slow, even compared to a recurve or longbow, it's just really slow. And it's really, really loud. And I'm and I'm really scared if I start putting some more string silencers on here to try to quiet this bow down, it's gonna slow it down even more. Usually string silencers slow your bow down probably anywhere from two to four feet per second so I mean the bow's are already slowed up I don't want to bring it down any slower so would I, would I buy this well, I use, well I'm going to use this bow no I have no use for this but I won't use this bow I'll just probably either I'll probably hang it up in my bow collection and leave it there as a wall hanger or maybe I'll give it to uh, one of my nieces or nephews or something for them to try it out but that's I'm not really happy with this bow I'm really disappointed because Browning's supposed to make a really good product they've always made good stuff I love them I mean I love their pistols uh, Browning uh, 9 millimeter Browning I love that's one of my favorite guns John Browning was a genius too he, the stuff he come up with was way beyond his time but this particular bow no not very good all right well that is my final thoughts on this bow I mean if you if you come across one for 40 50 60 bucks it might be worth just put your money on just to have it it is kind of a neat bow it is a 50 inch bow which is kind of neat it is a good looking bow too and at the very least it'll make a great wall hanger so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review on the on the Browning Cobra bow. I want to thank you guys for watching, um, and I've got some other cool reviews coming up. I've got part two of that, of that Amazon Broadhead Challenge. I'm just about finished with that right now, so that should be loading pretty soon. I've also got part two on my hog hunt coming out. That should be uploaded really soon as well, too, so be sure to look for that. I've got some other reviews on bows coming out. I want you to look for those, too. So, and i got some gun reviews coming out and some other how-to stuff coming out. So i got a lot of stuff planned for next month or so. So be sure to stay tuned for this channel. And that reminds me, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you subscribe, you click that bell icon next to the subscription button. That way you can be notified when I upload my new videos, all right? And please give me a thumbs up for these videos if you like them. If you don't like them, give me a thumbs down and leave me a comment. I like to answer all my comments. I, I try to answer everything that I can from my people. So I really love hearing from you guys. And I actually learn a lot from you guys. Some of you guys send me stuff, comments on stuff, and correct me on some of my bow stuff, which which is pretty good. So I like I like hearing getting feedback from you guys out there. So I appreciate everything you guys done, and be sure um, look for my next video. And until next time, guys, I want to thank you. Ciao.